Today's show is sponsored in part by Roan. Men's closets were due for radical reinvention, and Roan stepped up to the challenge. Roan's commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, flexible set of products known to men. I'm wearing their pants right now. Look in that Instagram picture. Mobility is everything. Looking good is easy, and there's a product for every occasion. They even have odor-free tech for Zuckerman's pants. The commuter collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to Roan. Dot com slash spike 911 and use promo code spike 911 you're going to save 20 percent off your entire order that's 20 percent off your entire order when you head to rhone.com slash spike 911 and use code spike 911 it's time to find your corner office comfort okay let's start the show spikes car radio starts now Madison Square Garden Live, 1973, Zuckerman. What a year. It's so good. This could just be the whole show. Wouldn't you have loved to have seen this concert? Oh. They were on top of their games. I've heard live stuff from 73. And you could have driven your 73 RS. <laughs> and shown up to Madison Square Garden. <laughs> for the four and been mugged. <laughs> You know, our whole movie on Frosted started with me asking Jerry, uh, if you could get into a time machine, where would you go? And he went, 1963, <laughs> to see the invention of the Pop-Tart. That not aside. The, not the invention of the 9-11. Huh? Not the invention of the 9-11, the Pop-Tart. Six, no, he goes, I want to go to uh, see where they made breakfast cereal. That silly place, Battle Creek, Michigan. I said, no Abe Lincoln, no Jesus, no, <laughs> no, Battle Creek, Michigan, 63. <laughs> and then we ended up making a movie. I think I might go to this show. I'm still listening to it, Zuckerman. Absolutely. I would, I would just hit, I'd hit Almond Brothers in San Francisco. I would hit Led Zeppelin in Madison Square Garden. Humble Pie was hot in 73. Yeah, I'd hit some Humble Pie. Welcome to Spike's Car Radio. I'm going to yeah. fade out the Zeps. Even though, damn. Zeps and grips. We're smoking some delightful cigars. You know. Mm-hmm. From one of the listeners. You know, if you're going to send us cigars, by the way, you're going to, you have to know right away. That we're skeptical uh, that that Bill Miller from the Malibu Kitchen, our cigar czar, is going to look them over. <laughs> he 90... may not look them over. Huh? He may not look them uh, over he before might he opines. them out of hand. <clears throat> yeah. uh, he may not. That's right. But he will weigh in. And, and more often than not, like sometimes people have dropped off uh, uh, cars with cigars in them. And they're fake Cubans. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I never know. And I like fake Cubans. I'm smoking a real Cuban right now, man. Yeah, this is, these, these all taste pretty good. This is a Hoyo. They what? want the ray. Yeah, and what did you what did you give me, Johnny? You I gave you a Romeo a... and Julieta. Oh, baby. Yeah. And it is tight. It is a good one. Mm. We've got a good show for you. We've got a uh, little business to get out of the way first. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. No, just a, a, a couple of, uh, of things that we wanted to announce. A surprise drop from Sheffield and Spike's Car Radio Ooh. tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Ultra Super Limited. The new Sheffield um, Field Watch, the Camp 24. What is the Camp 24? Well, I was talking to Jay, who runs uh, Sheffield, and I said, you know, it would be cool, since fathers give sons watches, and daughters now, why not make a watch they can send their kid to summer camp with and put the, the year number on it? 
and uh, and uh, we talked about this watch, and in uh, a minute later, he sent some designs, and and here it is. It's going to be for sale tomorrow morning. There's only a hundred of them, but if you're sending your kid to summer camp, they can't have their phone or anything else. They can have the new Camp Twenty Four Field Watch, a completely unique Sheffield watch, um, that will commemorate the year they went to camp, the year you s- sent them to camp and spent all that money on them. That's right, and, and they'll have it their whole lives, which is the Sheffield uh, way. Forget about the paddock. Remember those yeah, commercials? Yeah, those ads with the, with the handsome father and the handsome yes. son. They're not a watch. Yeah. They're a keepsake. Of, of a certain race. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for certain affluence, the whole thing. For, for a certain group of countries. I think for less than a couple hundred dollars, you can get the Camp 24. And um, if this goes well, um, uh, uh, Sheffield is going to do it every year. And, and we'll make more of them next year. Uh, and it's still listen to challenge. Get them sold in 50 seconds. This That's time. right. <laughs> they must all go in 50 seconds. Yeah, and if you can't, you will have to wait for this next round to Camp 25. But um, I was telling Jay, you could, you know, I, I can see gr- people going out to Long Island for the summer or, or going to New Jersey Shore and sharing houses, and everybody gets the, the watch, the Camp 25, the Camp 26. I was in camp in 73. Led Zeppelin was playing. <laughs> Led Zeppelin was playing in 1973. And I was at summer camp the one and only time I went for two weeks. And you know the story, Ferrison. Yeah, what happened? Two weeks. I went into <laughs> the, where the, the bathroom hut was, and there were no doors on the stalls. Yeah, military and, style. And I was determined to make it all two weeks without going poop. Oh, my sister I, that. And, yeah. and I will tell you, I made it 11 days. <laughs> <laughs> 11 long days in the summer of 73. And which hammock did you release into? No, I, I was at the lake. I barely <laughs> made it. I barely <laughs> really made it. Lake is shut barely. down. But do you think this is at the heart of all of your, your poop? Of your, course. <laughs> yes, scientist. You think- yes, Sigmund. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> You really think that that moment really affected you? That that's it why it fucked me up. Okay? It did. Let's be so, clear so about my it. sister made it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What <laughs> fucked you up more? Your dad croaking in front of you or this poop oh, moment? Oh, poop. Oh wow. <laughs> it's neck and neck. This is a, this is a photo finish at the horse you know, race. <laughs> later in the show, we have an ad for better help. We'll save it for that, which is the call in phone therapy. But my sister made it 14 days at camp without shitting. She was equally horrified. Like, Jewish kids shouldn't go to camp, basically. And, my uh, parents uh, offered me camp, and I said, I, I don't want Why would I want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping with a bunch of dirty, smelly kids. It was it was a good camp. It was Ted Williams' baseball camp, and Ted Williams was going to be there. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm good. Wow, I'm good. I liked camp. There was one moron in the in the hut singing Benny and the Jets all day. That's my oh. fate. That was my favorite song. It was my favorite up. song until he did that fourteen yeah. days in a row, eleven of which I was holding my bowels in. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you should have pooped on him. <laughs> So after you uh, went to the bathroom. And then, and then I made it the other three you, days easy. <laughs> you, you kept going. Oh, yeah. There wasn't. There wasn't a moment of just acclamation where you're like, oh, this is natural. Just everybody. Poops. No, it was, I'll just... it was a confirmation of everything that's wrong about a public bathroom without. And, you, and when you say by the lake, what does that mean? Like it was. OK, there's you, you're from the East Coast. The camp was on a lake in New Jersey and you had to go down there for the canoeing and the kayaking and trying to walk on the slippery moss covered rocks and do whatever activities so i was down there on day number 11 and i felt the urge and i started to hustle back towards the the bathroom the hut in in urgency and then it subsided i took two steps back towards the lake and then all of a sudden it was on and i had a, i had a turn tail and run so you went on the the toilet or oh whatever. yeah oh, you made it you made I, it oh, i made uh, it i made it okay no, I and was anybody watching you? Yeah, probably some creepy camp counselor <laughs> that wanted to watch me through you the know, open door. You know, do you door. remember when when I first moved to L.A., I went out to the Santa Monica Pier. They had bathrooms like that. They were just rows of doorless stalls, and yeah. you'd walk by and guys <laughs> taking dumps, and they'd wave at yeah. you, and you'd say, hey. Corn well, dogs were good. Get them at stand number 12. <laughs> so you know what? They do that in the Army because they don't want you jerking off in there, so no doors. <laughs> Thank you, Lieberman. Were you in the Army? <laughs> no, I just... I, I you just friend, know this? I friend was in the Navy who told me that. I asked him, I was like, why do they do that? Okay. Ooh, let me segue to the American Legion since we're talking about the Army. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, other bit of exciting news. <laughs> There is a partnership between the American Legion and Chip Ganassi Racing. 
for the <laughs> April 21 IndyCar race in Long Beach, the Long Beach Grand Prix. Poor Chip. <laughs> which will be featuring an unfrosted Honda American Legion car. American Legion unfrosted the movie Honda Car. That's right. This will likely be the fastest Pop-Tart ever seen <laughs> that we'll be sharing um, and showing uh, Monday. The car, I just, I've seen the car. I think I showed it to you, Zuckerman. I can't post it today. Um, but this Monday, this coming up Monday, we're all going to release it together. It's the Netflix unfrosted movie car. Nice. Isn't that unbelievable? Amazing. That's great. It's going to be driven by our friend uh, Linus Lundquist from Linus Sweden. Or Linus? Probably. Linus. Linus is how he pronounces his name. Um, they're going to have in-car for the Long Beach race uh, with unfrosted branding and tune-in info. And this is from uh, uh, the American Legion folks. I think we can also find a home for a Zuckerman sticker. Oh, I oh. got, a, I got a has bunch. one. I got a ton. All right. I got a bag. Uh, Ganassi, of course. Our Scott friend. Dixon. Scott Dixon is part of that team. And uh, in their most recent race, uh, won at Thermal with the American Legion. And... Uh, to celebrate, they had Pop Tarts. How about that? So uh, we couldn't be more excited. I think of all the press that we're doing for this movie, when I saw this car, I lost my mind. Jerry and I were like, "This, this is big time." That's cool. That's <laughs> yeah, we're excited. And uh, and yeah, and that, and I think Max Greenfield and I are going down there together. Nice. We're going to go down there. I'm trying to get Max an IndyCar ride along. He really wanted to do that, and we're going to be down there promoting Make a movie bar. and. <laughs> I think talking on NBC Sports about the movie and the car, and it's going to be a good day. Every Long Beach Grand Prix gets better for me somehow. That's a Last year was even yeah. better because of Ganassi, and now this year is going to be even better. How do we follow that up? I was going to say, how do you top it? Yeah. You die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get run over. <laughs> and I think Ganassi's bringing us out to the Indy 500, the three of us. This is very and American exciting. Legion as well. You know these guys, uh, uh, Dean over at American Legion. They're they're psyched, and we're psyched to be a part of this thing. So thank you, guys, American Legion, Chip Ganassi, and uh, Indy Racing, and the uh, Netflix and Frosted people for letting us do that. And let's not forget about the Zuckerman sticker. All right, I got Netflix it. does not know about that piece, but let's make sure it happens. Do you have them? Yeah. What well, color? Whatever. Um, I can show you the car after. Okay. But this it, makes perfect sense. But Netflix, it's bis biscuit and red is what it is. Netflix like. doesn't know about the sticker. Kellogg's doesn't know about the movie. It's all, <laughs> it's all intellectually consistent. <laughs> that Excellent. Is, that is very true, Zuckerman. No true. We're not Barbie. We are not Barbie. We did not make it with Mattel. Mm. We just made it, and we're bracing. Despite a couple of listeners have asked me, they say, tell me the truth. That's just a put on. They really knew. They really authorized. I said, I'm not, I'm not in any position to comment. But I can tell you 100% no. <laughs> they, 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 I think, have recently seen the trailer, and I, I believe they're excited. Well, that's in good. one way or another. That could be happy. Are there, are that could be mad. Are there attorneys excited? Ah. <laughs> uh, is there general counsel? Look, like, we're premiering in a couple of weeks, right? and so far, <laughs> I haven't uh, received a cease and desist. All right, all right. So far. <laughs> I mean, look, yeah. you know, wh when I was first doing the story, and I was, and and we were talking about that, I'm very sensitive to that. I I've, I produce things, and I've had you know things shut down, but but there there like I, I talked about Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, because we had Christian Bale on and the other guy there, Matt Damon. Yep, yep, I was there. The I was there. Guy. And the director. The guy. <laughs> and we were chatting with them, and I was saying, well. how did you get this done? And they were like, look, it's a public story. This really happened out in the world, and in that scenario, you can tell that story. It sure. really happened. Sure. And in this case, it's the same thing. So that was really our precedent. Plus and yours is satirical-ish. It is, so. but it's also, the, the core of it is true. Right. It's factually true. So we're talking about real events that happened out in the real world. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but I know, and I remember I remember them saying Ferrari was knocking down their door to try to read the script and give notes and everything else. Uh, and sure. they just kept everybody I'm out. I'm sure they were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having dealt with Ferrari once or twice, I'm sure they yeah. were. But it's cool. Uh, we gotta we gotta keep going here. We got a million uh, questions. Thanks to our uh, engaged listeners. Um, I got to talk about this uh, this E Ray Chevy Corvette. Have you driven this car? Mm -mm. No, it's you scoot cool. me, man. How is it? 
I scooped you? Yeah. How is that possible? I, I, I sensed that when you responded to me in a text. Is that the E-Ray? Yeah. There's, I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't know what this car was, but it's the first uh, production all-wheel drive Corvette. It's the first Corvette with an electric engine in the front. It's mm-hmm. got the regular cor, uh, Corvette engine, mid-engine, and then up front, 160 horsepower uh, hybrid motor. Is it right? one or two motors in the front? Just one. Just one. Um, that runs the front wheels, and the Corvette motor runs the rear wheels mm-hmm. for like a bunch of horsepower. Zero to 60 times, two and a half seconds. It's the fastest production Corvette. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Because it grips all four tires. And it was very delightful. It was that beautiful uh, non-metallic uh, gray. Um, I took off the top and drove it for a weekend. Isn't that the best part about Corvettes, that you can just take the top off? Well, look. It's just so great. I may have scooped you on this car, but I had never driven the mid-engine Corvette. Oh, it's phenomenal. Can you believe that? Oh, yeah. What did you, when you when they got it delivered, I went, oh, my God, I've never driven the, this new mid-engine Corvette. What you what'd you make of it? It's delightful. It's really a wonderfully driving thing. You know, but again, it was the all-wheel drive, so it wasn't the hot rod, you know, Corvette that I was used to having. But it integrated into my life perfectly. Yeah. I took it out for tennis. Everybody loved it. It's super comfy. They actually ride. They ride remarkably well. Like we yeah. did, we did a couple of years ago, uh, I think it was our last best driver's car, but we had we had the mid engine vet, we had a Ferrari F eight, and we had a Lamborghini Huracan something or other. And they just felt real similar because they're just mid engine right. s- sports supercar things, right? But the Corvette rode great, and we were on this big, long-ass road trip, and the other two rode like a Ferrari and a Lamborghini, like miserable right. after about an hour. So everyone was like trying to get into the Corvette. I was like, I put my hand up early, like, can I drive the Corvette home? You know, like, <laughs> well, it's probably not going to win. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. You know, like it's very so. cockpitty inside. It was very refined. The all-wheel drive, like I could totally see this as a West Side kind of dad dad mobile. Yeah. I, I sent it to these guys, and Jerry said, it has a shark face, and that made me laugh. It's a little shark face, but I, I liked it. It's very very pointy, very Batman, batmobile oh, yeah. um, What's the price point on it? <clears throat> That's the other thing. This one's uh, kind of expensive. It was the, the one I think I drove was like 144 144 that much? Wow. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, had loaded okay, it up. Before, you know, but I mean, the 918 of Corvettes is- but, but, but Zuckerman- the Corvette has always been this. Look at this supercar performance for sixty or seventy thousand right. dollars, right? Right. So as you get up a little higher now, d- double that plus right. a little more, you start to go. Well, what else am I getting for that? And money? that's also the same price as the Z06, and, yeah. Which is a real because that Z06 is it's more powerful. It's six hundred seventy horsepower from a V8 with no turbos. It's pretty impressive, and you know it, it handles it. It's as good as the last GT3 RS. I think the new GT3 RS outhandles the the Z06. I know it does, um, but it's real. The Z06 is really, really good. It's really, really great. So, but I, I got to drive the E Ray. I'm excited. You should. Yeah, it's, I will. Uh, I will. <clears throat> it's, I spent it's on the list. I enjoyed spending time in it. I really That's did. cool. What are you driving, Johnny? I got a Genesis G70, the sedan. So wow. it's the it's the three. Did point you drive that here tonight? Oh, it's here tonight. Yeah, three point three liter uh, turbo. This is one of my favorite new brands, Genesis. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, yeah. This what this one was we named it our car of the year in two thousand nineteen. So that means we last time I drove it was two thousand eighteen. And it's funny because it's re- it's still really good. It's a great you know it's a BMW three series competitor, right? right. So it's rear drive. It's a sports sedan. You put it in sport mode, it gets sporty. But it's just funny because it was designed, if it came out in 18, it means it was designed in 14. Right. So it's... Long it's, of two. So, yeah, it's, and it's got some, like, residual Hyundai-ness to it that the new stuff doesn't. Like, for instance, to open the fuel door, you got to hit a button inside the cabin. You, you don't just push it. Right. And then, like, this one, the button's sticking. It has, like, 900 miles on it. You got to, like, jam, 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 jam the button. But it drives great, beautiful interior. You know, if you look at it, like, you, you look at it, and you're like, oh, the screen's really small. Because back in then, that's the size of the screens. Now screens are all 17 inches across. So, but it's it's a nice car, and it's a good value. And it's, you know, it's 360-some horsepower, 370-some pound-feet of torque. And it makes all the torque at 1,300 RPM. So it's, like, wow. super quick. Didn't so. you get a new car? I did. I bought a Corolla, a GR Corolla. Remember yes. That thing? The yes. Blue Chew Mobile. The Blue Chew. Yes. yes. We never got to talk about it. We yeah. haven't done a show since then. You know what? I, Are you loving that car? Well, it's got 103 miles on it right now. So I'm waiting. I'm doing the break in. 
Come on, no. let me fuck but it why, up. But why? Why doesn't? Why? Because you have so many press cars. I just I've been busy and you know wife was sick and blah 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 blah. Right. But I'm, I'm waiting. I gotta go on a little road trip with it, then take the oil out, put in some synthetic, and then go crazy. If Blue Chew wanted to put some uh, signage on it, <laughs> would you be open to that? <laughs> uh, if it's a removable decal, <laughs> maybe. Why not? Come Depend- on, leave him in a script for the neighborhood. Good for Richard. <laughs> Just, Good for everyone. just what my wife needs. <laughs> I tell you what, I was driving today. Well, hold on, I got to do an ad because we're going to keep going. Then we can start with that. We got. We also have. De- I've got Dear Zuckerman. I found some really good Dear Zuckerman. Letters. Oh, good. But real got quick, questions. Real quick, no one knows a Z has driven a Z a GR Corolla. Yeah, yeah. So that was we, the thing. He, you put me in one. Yeah, the red one. And yeah. I have to tell you, it's it's in in terms. It's very different than say the BRZ. You know, but it's because it's a little, it's a, what is it, three cylinders? It's a, yeah, it's a three cylinder that makes 300 horsepower. It's, so it's it was fucking, no, it was, cylinder. It was it's such an engaging, fun car. It, it, a, a 10 out of 10 on the fun level. Yeah. Another, yeah. another car that just goes, it's just all about fun. Yeah. So I'm amazing. I'm a, it's, yeah. it's amazing. I'm a, there are just so many things to drive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here I, you know, I drove uh, the new Tesla, the new Model Y, and I, I used their. They, for some reason, we have the uh, the what do they call it? Full self driving, supervised now. Everything's done. Everything's different, and uh, it drove me from the house here to your house, right? But on the highway, I started uh, rolling texts back to Jay from Sheffield to make sure I got the Camp 24 stuff right. And it kept warning me, and I wasn't paying attention to it. And then it went, you're done. It stopped all the self-driving. And then when I got here, I I put it in park, uh, and it said, look, didn't say it like this, but essentially (laughs) said, you got four more chances and then we're taking this away from really? you. Really? They put you in prison. They put you in you can't have you can't have it anymore. It's, so it's a beta. Got, it's got a camera that looks at your eyes. Oh yeah. And so if your eyes are not on the road, yeah. So you get some glasses, some of those old fake glasses with the googly eyes on front. No, it, but it it's here's what it's doing. If when you're looking down, yeah. it's tell it, it it can tell. God knows what else by the way you're broadcasting to uh, Tesla. They're in there watching you pick your nose. But look, they are. Remember you remember that? The, yeah, the, of course. The yeah, yeah. They um but it, this time, Zuckerman, it was stopping for speed bumps and little divots on the way here. Things it couldn't possibly know. I've never driven that car here before. I was really impressed with it. I, I liked it. I mean, I know Tesla's falling apart right now. But again, I, I like these Model Ys. I love them. I think they're good. They are a great product. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to just focus on the product and not anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and for those of you who ask, well, why did your wife change her mind? She didn't. I talked to her into it. <laughs> I said, look, if you want to talk about the blood on all the auto companies' hands, we can do that. Or you can have something you love and you can focus your uh, your political point of view on other things. Rivian's pretty uh, guilt-free right now. Mm. So we had uh, on the tennis court this morning, not a tennis story, we came off and somebody had the new Rivian SUV. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, and, and we were all looking at it. Everybody was excited about it. Tell us about the Rivian. This guy told us all about his Rivian. He was very excited about his beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And Are we'll get into that. Okay, hold on. Let's talk about Race Deck. Over two decades ago, Race Deck was invented a cost effective, durable, and truly do it yourself modular floor system engineered for the garage. Race Deck's multi patented design allows for easy do it yourself installation without all the hassles and mess of toxic epoxy coatings, transforming your garage in just hours, not days. Choose from over 20 styles to create the coolest garage on the block. I currently have the coolest hangar in Santa Monica Airport. Thanks to Race Deck. I love my new floor. Thank you very much, Jorgen. Uh, the founder is a Porsche nut, Jorgen Mahler. Came up, uh, uh, invented modular uh, garage floor systems, but told me on the phone we were chatting, he said he was he was making dance floors <laughs> for backyards. And then he was staring at them once going, this could work really great in my garage. Now they have 170 employees, 150,000 square foot manufacturing facility in Salt Lake City, Utah. They yes. are the shit. Race deck. And they have a deal for you. Shop at racedeck.com and use code SPIKE911 for an exclusive 15% off and free shipping. Doesn't chip, doesn't peel, doesn't stain. Loads in excess of 80,000 uh, pounds. And I can tell you, it's the best floor in 22 years down at Santa Monica Airport that I have had. The very best. It's firm. It's not kicking up tiles. It's a floor. I love it. Because, you know, down there, it's a little goofy, Zuckerman. They have the, 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 it's not cement down there. You couldn't polish the cement of these Cessna hangers. Right. It's asphalt. 
which right. presented some issues. And sometimes the water sweeps under the 10 hangers in a mm-hmm. row as it moves through, right? So you need a very specific kind of floor and race deck fixed this problem. I don't know why it took me 20 years to get it fixed, but, <laughs> but it did. Because you're dumb. Because I'm a stupid moron. <laughs> that was you saying you were a moron, Zuckerberg. Yeah. Um, this story caught my attention um, because there's so much there's so much misinformation about electric cars out there. And I know electric cars are boring, so I won't uh, talk that long about it. But... Um, you know, the, you know, it's recently a salesman we all know called me. You, you can't sell these things. The whole electric car thing is dying. It's not true. We're selling year to year more electric cars than any other car. And this here, this story that was here published in um, one of our uh, California papers. Electric cars credited with lower CO2 emissions in U.S. neighborhoods. The booming use of electric vehicles in parts of California is reducing CO2 emissions in those areas, bolstering a key pillar of the state's driving towards net zero. In other words, we're cleaning up the air. They're working. It's all working. And, you know, uh, let's see, who's this guy? Scientists at the University of California, Berkeley, say a network of sensors set up around the San Francisco Bay Area, where Teslas and other EVs are a common sight, has logged a small but steady drop in the volume of planet warming carbon dioxide being pumped out every year. So I would also guess that extends to pollution. Yeah, no, that's that's a huge one is the NOx is way down. Yeah. Really? Way down. Yeah, yeah, it works. It's working. And, and you're gonna be, it's going to be very obvious. Like you look at San Jose, right? 46% of the cars registered, new cars registered in San Jose in 2023 were EVs. You look at North Dakota, 1%. So you're going to be able to like, you know, measure the air in, in various cities. Right. And, and that's, like, that's why, why does this one have so much less lung cancer and childhood asthma? Look, because oh, they got EVs and these dunderheads. Exactly. Yeah. And there's so much misinformation out there about, and it's being driven by, of course, the folks that don't want you buying electric cars. For some reason. The oil and but, gas industry. But it's so weird because like they're, they're, they're like, like you know, Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, these are American companies. Like they should and be by like, the way, this stuff's cool. But yeah. if you can't get, a, get behind that reason, listen to this. I was watching some much smarter people than myself talk about this issue. And one of the things I didn't know that I learned was... The whole world is going to be driving electric cars, and we, the Americans, are in a ch- in a race with China right now to beat China. them to market with electric cars. Oh, China's and killing if, it. And if we do not step right. up right. the electric car uh, building and manufacturing, we're going to lose to China. We're, we're losing. How about that for are a reason? Are we losing? It, dude, China. So China, you know, during the pandemic, they, 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 you know, the government just said, stop buying gas cars. So everyone stopped. And... You know, the, the China is a bigger car market than the U.S. The, the The cars are incredible that they're making now because you know the technology's it's not that hard, and 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 they're just they're making like they have autonomous cars coming out, and they have AI in the cars, and huge processors, and it's just they don't have PI lawyers like me. They don't have PI <laughs> yeah. lawyers. Yeah, 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 but that's a good. I mean, do we really want to lose out to the Chinese? No, this? No. no. Let let the American no. companies build. There's a future in it. We can export those cars. You get it? Yeah. Well, no. China is exporting. That's the thing. They're going to start flooding Europe. No, I'm saying we can export to them. We can. Well, Competitive. Oh, Do you? No, no, not to China. No, no mis- to Europe. To Europe. To yeah, yeah, Europe. To right. That's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying. Let me yeah. let me say it. Let me say it. Also, some good news though. The BMW M5 Touring is officially coming to the United Yay. States. Yay! How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Too late. Wait, I think I have some sound effects that I can. Oh wait, that was like. Yeah, there's some applause. Thirty years later, wagon lovers rejoice. There's a new performance wagon coming to America. The M5 Touring. Which is, I got pretty excited. I don't know why over and over again. I'm not even sure I would want to use one of these like A6, RS6 Avants or AMG E63 oh, wagons. Oh, E63 so good. They're great. But I got excited again when I heard about this M5 Touring. And in my mind, I said, I'm going to buy one of those. I'm going to get one. So the guy why, do, named, why do dads love these cars so much? Oh, wagons are the coolest. Why? Wagons are just cool. Because it's, 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 you, know, it's, you, you don't have to get an SUV. A wagon can do basically everything Americans use SUVs for. But it's still a car. So it drives like a car. And, and less uh, lower center of gravity. Yeah, so yeah. you're not going to tip over your family. Yeah, and it's not an extra 500 pounds for no reason. You know, it's just, it's, they're great. And I they're, like the idea of it. Oh, they're super cool. 
Um, you, by the way, speaking of tipping over, that that video last week of that uh, guy in the uh, Toyota FJ on oh, the beach yeah. in oh, Dubai. Oh, yeah, that was wonderful. No, it was, it was Qatar. Yeah, it was Qatar? Awful. Yeah, yeah. Cutter? Yeah, yeah. Cutter, yeah. That was so satisfying <laughs> for so many reasons. The car, the the trying to manage the spin, the way he was flickered out of it. Beautiful. The fact that he was okay. He got up and walked and then fell. The white robes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was so... Angelic. Again, the listeners are on this stuff way faster than I am. I laughed out loud when I saw it. But I just I just loved... It was such a satisfying video. And it was great. Cause initially, I thought it was some AI thing. And yeah, then, right, you see, right. <laughs> then you start to see all the other details, like the people in the robes and everyone coming. You go, no, this really happened yeah, to this schmuck. He was, was flung. He was ejected. He was like in a tray bucket. He was thrown right out. Is that out. really a, a, a truck that you would drive on the beach like that? And oh, sand? Sure. FJ? Yeah, yeah, FJ, absolutely. So how but, do you accomplish that that kind of an accident? Well, he... That's he, a tank he, slapper. He fishtailed. That's a tank slapper right there, yeah. And then he went like this, sucker, and he caught the edges. That's what happens right. to SUVs on the street, on the highway. That's yeah. what almost happened to me when I got hit yep. last summer or the summer before. Yep, you, yep, the yep. second you go sideways, it just goes... Brrr. But it's wet, yeah. wet sand. Yeah. It moves, right? So, so as the truck started going sideways, it dug in and flipped, and then I guess he wasn't belted in. Genius. <laughs> he really <laughs> caught that just right. The tramp. He hit the trampoline just right. Yeah, was, he certainly did. Beautiful. Luft is coming up, Costa Mesa. Uh-huh. We're we're all going down to celebrate. Uh, there's a good chance uh, you'll see everyone from the Porsche community down there. Uh, maybe even us. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> we always decide very late to go, but we. Uh, but I was looking at their social media today and getting really excited about that. Um, we have one requirement. One requirement that? only. Shade. Easy parking. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. And shade. <clears throat> and we're going to be at Pebble Beach again. Nice. Oh, yeah. They ask for your headshots and stuff. I didn't, uh, this time yes, I said, why yes, don't you yes, guys yes. send in your own headshots? So yes. nobody's Can surprised. I send Rufus in my place? Whatever you want. I can, don't can care. Can Rufus come instead of you? <laughs> <laughs> Much more articulate. <laughs> Just eat the mic. But can you believe it's already springtime and summer? No. It's really no, no, nuts. No, 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 no. It's really nuts. The right? first quarter of the year is gone. gone. Tax day's coming along. Oh, to no. us. oh don't talk it. about I that. Yeah, that I, don't I talk about it. Uh, oh, you brought year. us down, Zuckerman. Bad year. <laughs> Here, let me cheer you up. <laughs> A man has been arrested after he allegedly pursu- uh, purchased two luxury cars from Coral Gables, Florida dealership using his stolen identity. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> On Tuesday, Matthew John Sanguin oh, walked no. into Infinity of Coral Gables. It says located at 2701 South Lejeune Road to Love. purchase a McLaren 570S. At an Infinity dealer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He used the personal information, social security number, full name and address, and driver's license belonging to Joshua Atkins from Delaware to buy the car and apply for the loan through Capital One. (laughs) This man, uh, Mr. Sanguin, sent all the forms and applications in via email to the finance director at the dealership, in addition to a photo of Atkins' driver's license with his own photo taped to it. (laughs) I'm adding taped. After the loan was approved, Sanguin made plans to pick up the car, and he was arrested. (laughs) <laughs> is Mr. Sanguin Asian? Is that what you're saying? He was arrested for a previous case on March 20 where he used Atkins information to buy a 2020 Porsche Taycan. <laughs> wow. wow. I guess that deal went through. Wow. But he's paying with how real this, money? No, he's what he's doing. Oh, he just gives I'm, him a check. I'm not sure how I would feel about this. You know how the, folks can steal your identity mm-hmm. and then they can get arrested and then you get pulled over and you get taken in, right? Oh, yeah. If I found eh, a guy just bought a Porsche kind of based it might not be that upset about it <laughs> yeah. I just wonder okay, how, how spike you bought a prius oh, oh, oh I how, did not. how clever i always think how clever is this guy how ballsy is he and how stupid are they he's got well you can always tell in the uh the mug shot the uh, if the eyes are really red they're just high as a kite the eyes were really red. But was he? Guy. He was giving him a bad check. Like what was the? No, no, no. Currency? He he had all of this guy's personal information to apply. So essentially, he said, "I'm Johnny Lieberman." He yeah, had yeah. your social security number, your driver's but license. You got to give him like a check or something. No, not necessarily. You could just mm-hmm. you, you could apply finance. for credit. No zero drive oh, off. Oh, oh, zero yeah, down. I'm yeah, zero yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. I just zero had a car, yeah, yeah. I just had a car come in, and, and right, uh, all right. I was asked for was I think <clears throat> excuse me insurance card and my driver's license. Okay. You realize in many parts of the country. 
in many parts of the country. <laughs> what happened? Your crank fall out there? <laughs> I think <laughs> Lieberman's doing something to me. In many parts of the country. It caused you to flick your crotch? I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> His shirt was up. I told him to pull his shirt down. Oh, yeah. You can see his gut. <laughs> oh, yeah. In, in many parts of the country, a, a house is less is less expensive than a Porsche. That's true. Yeah. But think about the difference in the there? amount of paperwork. <laughs> think, of, think about much, how much paperwork to get a home loan oh. versus a car loan. Oh, cars, 25 minutes. Yeah. But a home? Oh, forever. Simple. Yeah. Notarize. Yeah, it's terrible. My yeah. wife, my wife was. She was like, "We we should really get a Florida house." I go, "Let's move to Florida." I'm gonna move to Florida, Zucker. I'm telling you, it's in my future, not did my you, immediate future. Did you? But for, for precisely these reasons, you can do whatever you want. No, <laughs> get a big house. That I can get a that I can get a house for the price of a car. And that would be can, great. And then you can get a car for the price of zero. You just walk in the dealership. <laughs> say, give me a car. I would, My it, name is Sang look, Win. <laughs> I spent <laughs> five years <laughs> committing car fraud? Yes, I would do that in Florida. I'm going to be a completely different human there. I am. I'm going to be a cigarette-smoking, big, fat guy at a marina, and I'm going to be involved with drugs, drug dealers, and they're going to use my marina to bring the drugs in, and I'm going to buy cars with your identity, Zuckerman. Fine. I'm excited <laughs> about that. And every Friday night, we go to TGIFs and have a, and have a nice cruise. No, we'll go. <laughs> did you watch that Jake Gyllenhaal movie, that, that yeah, bouncer Roadhouse. movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it was the most watched thing on, Except on Amazon, and... I enjoyed how bad it. I just loved being in Florida with all those people in that location. What I was just saying, McGregor was phenomenal. It was Phenomenally most, bad, most absurd character. He was of absurdly all time. terrible. Yeah, yeah. He just walked like yeah. this, and then we have to look at his naked ass totally and balls naked. from behind. He's a terrible actor, but it was great and and so watchable at the yeah, same time. Yeah, so it was just like he made no sense. The whole movie doesn't make sense. None of the movie makes sense. Yeah, people are getting shot and killed. There's never a police officer involved. No cops. But there are boats, there's Florida, there's beach, there's cars, there's fights, and you're you're happy. As a guy, you're just happy. Yeah. But you know, I watched the original Roadhouse the other night. Uh, way better. Way more, no, way more fighting. This. So my family was in uh, Tahoe skiing, mm. and I wisely stayed home because I'm not going to risk the uh, legs mm. for tennis. <laughs> uh, so imagine, I'm home. I've got the dog, little dog, Zuckerman, little dog theory. I just saw uh, Seth Rogen on Instagram. He got a little dog. I, I texted uh, or uh, commented, you're going to be happy now. The key to happiness is little dogs. That's right. So I had the little dog. Zuckerman and I are sending stupid parrot pictures to each other. <laughs> it's Saturday night. I'm in my underwear. I don't have to dress up. Nobody's in my house. I'm eating pizza, and I'm watching Roadhouse. Phenomenal. What a night. What a life. It was a good life. It was a good <laughs> night. That's great. Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah. Zuckerman and I love this. Uh, there's this feed that has this singing parrot and a dog, and the dog does not want to hear the parrot singing. He goes, and somehow they make like 10 videos a day. <laughs> it's a good feed. I, the truth if you want is, in on this, Johnny, I can put you. Well, us, I was just, I can put us all in a group thread. I was just going to say the truth for those listening is they really do send animal videos back and forth. <laughs> These two the cockers are I was sending animal videos. <laughs> <laughs> the bird, the birds bothering the dog. Are <laughs> the dog could just this eat is, the thing. People, uh, people think we talk about cars. No, it's just, it's just <laughs> no. Animals. We do. Every once in a while, it's a car. Like yeah. I, I sent Zuckerman a BMW that I liked the other day, but. <laughs> We're road testing <laughs> ideas for new pets right now. So we've got the dog covered. Just remember what... Do you what, know how close I am to buying one of those birds, Zuckerman? It's Here's the noise the factor. Yeah, they don't turn off, though. You'll get a <laughs> laugh in five minutes, you're like, and then it's going to go on for days and days. And then you're going to be the dog. <laughs> as, as, as Brett Burke said, as Brett Burke said, one, one uh, bird equals four cats. Yeah. Just, just mm. be aware of that equation. Okay. I got Dear Zuckerman, and I got questions, and we're, uh, this is going to be a long podcast. That's all right. I just have one question. Go ahead. What the hell is an Ionic 6, Lieberman? Why is it so ugly? Oh, it's a weird design, yeah. Well, I look like I'm looking at the <laughs> at the bastard offspring of an Infinity J20 That's a random and a Pontiac question, Aztec. Exactly. Yeah. All else, I, I agree with you. It's it's an odd design. You can lease that right now for like two ninety nine a month. So you don't have to go in and steal the car. You no, can just no, you can that, just have like, it. I think that's my cell phone bill is like two ninety nine a month. You know, like it's it's, a, it's cheap and it's it's the Ionic Five powertrain. So it's a good you know competitive powertrain. And yeah, you get a weird looking sedan, but. 
Two ninety nine a month. I was in my in my nineteen sixty two VW Type thirty four. I called it, and then <laughs> yes, and and he's in his Ionic six. This guy and we're looking at each other. He's look, we're, he's looking at my ugly car, and I'm looking at his ugly car. <laughs> and you didn't know it was who who wins who, who wins, wins that contest. Yeah, yes. and yeah, you didn't yeah. know it was each other. Yeah. Great. Mm. Yeah, I actually haven't driven it, but I've driven the Ionic Five and the EV Six and all the all the Genesis electric Hyundai electric stuff. It's all great. It's all really good. And now I think they opened up the the Tesla supercharger network. So yeah, it's good. Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should be at least simple. That's why for the last so many years, ten thousand. I've been drinking AG1 every day. <laughs> By the way, d- didn't Jerry Seinfeld say he, he drinks said AG1? He's drinking. I don't oh, believe did? it. Yeah, yeah. Nice. AG1, come on, man. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes us feel energized and uh, nourished and strong. Uh, That's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. I know I'm giving AG1, um, I'm giving my body high quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know it is safe. And their ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrient density. Healthy aging shouldn't feel complicated. The thought of taking a bunch of pills in the morning, I don't want to do it. It's exhausting. So one daily scoop of AG1 covers my nutrient gaps and supports my mental and physical Health. Mental health. <laughs> My mental health is well, falling uh, apart, Zuckerman. No, their AG1 is trying. You can hear it in the reads. I can't even get the words out. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why I partnered with them for so long. That is true. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free year of uh, uh, vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs, a free one year supply. Five free AG1 travel packs. I'm taking to uh, New York on Monday, Zuckerman. Um, you can get uh, the travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash spike911. That's drinkag1.com slash spike911. Check it out. All right, let's do Dear Zuckerman, then we're going to do questions. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, I thought we didn't have enough show, and then um, I asked for questions, and now... We have too much show. We have too much show. All right, these are, again, real... Uh, letters to Dear Abby that Zuckerman is going to answer instead. <laughs> <laughs> you set it up. You got that, Paul? <laughs> I get it, Dave. These are real Dear Abby questions, but the spit is Zuckerman. That's right, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> real questions to Dear Abby. Okay. That's how you do it in late night. You set it up four times. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. Dear Zuckerman. My wife and I have a four-year-old son who is interested in trying various peewee sports. He's four years old. He has started playing t-ball and soccer. Both my wife and I are pretty good athletes. Our son is a klutz. (laughs) His attention wanders. His coordination isn't quite there. He doesn't seem to have the makings of being a good athlete. Our issue is after he comes off the field, he asks us if he did good, quotes, and definitely wants his praise, but we don't feel comfortable doing that. What should we do? <laughs> you people. <laughs> you're such, he's four years old, you assholes. Let him be. <laughs> Tell him he did a great job and he's going to be better next week. Uh, Can you uh, believe this one? These people, this is how. Uh, he's four. <laughs> he's not even going to remember these games. <laughs> but he'll remember if you're an asshole. <laughs> We can't. What do we say to this kid? <laughs> You're a klutz, okay? You must have been online getting an extra helping your brains when God was handing out coordination. <laughs> Face to the wall for an hour. Wow. Can you believe? You know, T ball is a kid hits the ball and everybody runs to it and tackles each other. Yeah, There's not yeah, even a yeah. game going on there. Uh, 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 flabbergasted. It, yeah, flabbergasted. Amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. What pricks? <laughs> My wife and I are athletes. Very good athletes. Oh, yeah. The but we're also idiots. Maybe what should we do? I think cruel. you need to give up the kid for adoption, is yes. what I would do. Give him to somebody who yeah. get, understands a, kids. A loving family. <laughs> maybe, Look, you, maybe your wife stooped the klutz. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the mailman oh. is uncoordinated. There you go. I did have to learn this during baseball because I I, I love baseball uh, as much as I love tennis. And when my son was older and playing older baseball, I couldn't help but tell him because he was playing center field positions I played. And then uh, uh, Erica said, you can't do that. He doesn't want to. And I go, well, what what am I supposed to do? She goes, all you have to say is 
I, I love watching you play this sport. That was fantastic. Doesn't matter what happened. I just love watching you play. It's so much fun to watch you play. Because kids yep. don't want to hear this from their parents. Right. They just want you to be a parent and say, I love watching you play this game. It's amazing every time. That's it. But I had to learn that. I had to but learn. But you're bang on about, like, th when they're four. I mean, Richard, when he was, like, five or something, he played baseball. And I was helping coach. And, like, th 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 three quarters of the kids lay down on their face. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> or they look at the sun and burn their redness. Yeah. That's I mean, what they're supposed they, to do. They just tackle each other yeah. in the outfield. I mean, it's just, it's just not even a baseball. Our kid's really. four. Yeah. Know. He's not ready for the Olympics. Yeah. We're, I, I we're recently put him in the compost pile. I recently showed the kids who were teenagers a picture of, of, of a guy, and I said, "Do you remember this guy?" And they go, "No, who's that?" I go, "That's your grandfather." <laughs> you, know, they, you know, people they haven't seen since they're kids. They don't even remember these things. I'm just joking about the grandfather. They remember them, but they don't remember pretty much anything from earlier than ten, unless it was a video game. Or, or unless being told that they suck at something. Or <laughs> no, like, I don't even they, know that. Yeah, that's childhood trauma. They, they remember they like... May, they may, may not remember, but it may break their little fragile eggshell brains. One of them, my, my uh, the little guy, James, he, they, you know what they remember? They Remember when that kid pooped in the backyard? I'm oh, like, yeah. what? <laughs> they remember all the poop. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah. Zuckerman, that's like right. you. That's right. Well, yeah. everyone remembers who pissed in the second grade. <laughs> yeah. I hope Jim Tibbetts isn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jim <Jimmy> Tibbetts. <laughs> <laughs> you just sounded tippet. <laughs> Suckerman. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, who pissed in your school? What did Tibbets do? Pissed in the second grade. Well, what did he do? In his pants? Yeah. Oh, poor Tibbets. Oh. Poor Tibbets. Yeah. Well, later he put... He put um, paint in Mr. Swenson's coffee. <laughs> but Mr. Swenson's coffee was filled with booze. <laughs> oh, I had some of that. Those are great teachers. Yeah. And then Mr. Swenson went away to Charlie Murphy's rest home for 30 days. <laughs> Came back looking like he'd seen a ghost. Oh, yeah, no. we had we had Mr. Murphy who had the vodka coffee. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Mm. All right. <laughs> Tibbets. <laughs> Well, I think it's fair. You told your poop story. He's now he's his peep story. I think he's going to be fine with it. I think we all have these stories. Mm. I don't think I do, but uh, dear Zuckerman, after 28 years, my wife left me to find herself. In quotes, she says she doesn't <laughs> want a divorce. She just needs time and space to work on herself. But she also wants to work on our marriage. She doesn't want to talk, text, or contact me. What am I supposed to do? Go have fun. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> All she wants to do is work and be alone in her apartment. Good. Uh, Good. I, I wrote down what? one word: celebrate. Yes. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened. You start singing "Happy Trails" <laughs> to you. Order the pizza. Till we Put Roadhouse. Again, <laughs> take your pants get a little off. dog. Look and get don't, girlfriend. don't get us, <laughs> don't get us wrong here. We all love our wives, but after a couple of decades, this is the best news you could ever get. The best news. You're on your own for a little while. Chill out, enjoy yourself. That's right, Zuckerman. Get a little dog. I'm not saying you should get a girlfriend. Enjoy yourself. She's happy. If you really want her back, sir, the, the quickest way to get her back is you get that girlfriend. You let her live her life. And you go live your life. And then the minute she finds out what you're up to and that you're doing just fine, she'll be banging on the door. And there's a good chance you're going to say, you know what? Keep, keep staying in that apartment of yours. That's right. <clears throat> That's right. Keep doing, your, keep doing you. I'll do me. <clears throat> Say you want to find your little self. I know who I am, but I like my dick needs to know what. Ferris <laughs> 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 is out there. More uh, athletic greens for Ferris. I mean, when I read this, I couldn't <laughs> understand the problem. I could not understand the problem. And I know, uh, and I love Erica, and she loves me. But I know, if it were the opposite, if I said I'm going to find myself, she'd go fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> she'd go take, take your, your time. time. <laughs> she would. Yeah. She would come on this right. show and say it. Yeah. We've been together for a long time. It's fine. This is great news. I guess it's actually it was an uplifting letter, I thought. <laughs> All right. I have some more Dear Zuckerman's here. Hold on. I've got to, I've, I'm going back. I've got them ordered weirdly. Uh, letter number three. Dear Zuckerman, my husband and I have been married for a long time. But, after, uh, but a few days ago, I came back quickly from an errand. 
I wanted to tell him I was home and found him looking at pornography on his computer. <laughs> I was shocked at what he was watching and extremely hurt. It felt like he was being unfaithful sexually and mentally. I asked him what he was, why he was looking at it, and he said I, he didn't know. I said I would. T- <laughs> he said. I said, hold on, hold on. I said I would talk to him when he knew the answer, but he has said nothing now for three days. Another happy I need, customer. <laughs> I need help letting this go, but I haven't been able to. How do I resolve this, Zuckerman? Oh boy, you okay? You've been married to a man for a very long time. There's a key word in there. It's three small letters, man. Okay, and this is men do this, lady. This is what men lady. do, lady. Hey, lady. Hey. This is what men do, and you know what? Uh, Laugh about it. Let him go. Let him exactly. go. Exactly. He's. Well, what's the problem here? He's taking care of himself. The burden's not on you. And and I don't. But why isn't the guy talking? Why isn't he saying this? I love the. I don't know. That I means, don't know. A great answer. <laughs> Sounds like they've had communication problems. I don't know. I suddenly found my dick in my hand. I don't know what, why. Yeah. Uh, it was she says, how come you haven't said anything? I still don't know. I don't know how it all happened. Yeah, I'm going to find the real killer. What? I need to go to my own apartment and find myself. <laughs> why are you looking at that? Why are you asking that question? Yeah. Is that okay. not obvious now, what is happening? Okay. Why he's looking the at it? The real question is. Do you think he was watching some other kind of porn other than man oh, and Oh, well, that's woman? a good point. Then she would have a point. Then, then, then if she opened the door and it was Randy, sure. Randy's Rump Rangers, yeah. um, maybe. That's the most benign uh, possibility. I mean, with what's offered these days. It could be <laughs> anything. Right, right. Yeah, it could be anything. That's a very good point. She may yeah. be shocked by... But again, you don't ever... And this is a word of advice to the uh, small amount of women listening to this podcast. Don't ever venture into a man's sexual uh, porn habits. <laughs> it's horrific. <clears throat> it's horrific. It's embarrassing even to them. Oh, yeah. And and uh, and, and I, he's got a good point. We're not sure why we do it. What are you doing there? There's this little small acorn, the, the most primitive part of your brain. I think it's called the amygdala. And... And it just makes you do shit. Yeah. And you don't yeah. know why, really. Yeah. Fight, flight, porn. <laughs> it's, yeah. So it's well, all- you know, it's it's most easily illustrated in the guy who approaches the pint of ice cream or the girl, right? You look at it, you feel desire, you eat it, and then you feel like shit, right? Yeah. That's kind of the pornography up and down. I mean, who here hasn't closed a laptop in disgust? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. I don't know. So... I uh, we used to joke about that as before sex guy and after sex guy, not oh, yeah. with porn, just regular sex. Just like before, you're just all ja- then you're like, what did I just do? Yeah. Oh my oh, god. god, who am I? What's wrong with me? <laughs> that's what. What, I, what did we do? Look at what we're both. We're filthy. This is horrible. That's why testosterone here? is a control drug. Yeah. You just can't walk into Seven Eleven and say, I'm going to have a pint of testosterone. No. Now I want to know what he was looking at. Oh, you know what he was looking at? I something, don't. Something horrific. Yeah. That's men. Sorry. But we're awful. Look, we'll admit to you right now, we're awful. We're, we're awful. The, we're the worst gender. My name is Paul. I'm <laughs> awful. <laughs> and finally, our last letter. Dear Zuckerman, my grandfather sold me an old farmstead that has been in the family for 200 years. Well, that's nice. Last week, he showed me a wooded area behind the barn with a human skull. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, this guy could. I was not expecting that. Oh, that's good. He told me that when his father died, more than 50 years ago, he was curious about how long it would take a body to decompose. So he left his body in the woods to keep track of the progress. Well, now he's going to go find the other 50 skulls back there. (laughs) Exactly. Branch is a serial killer. Should I tell the rest of the family who believes that great granddad was cremated? I'm resenting my grandfather for putting me in the middle of this. Any advice you would have, Zuckerman, would be greatly appreciated. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
uh, this is this is you know how you never know what to talk about at Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is exactly what Thanksgiving 2024 is going to be for you. Yeah. You're going to get everyone around the table, including your grandfather who sold you the, the farmstead. This this you know 200 year old beautiful farmstead. Yeah, with with, with human remains. Re- remains. With the skull. And you're going to say, and I want to give thanks. And you know what I want to give thanks about today? Grandpa telling me that he left. He, he left a body there to rot. That is... I mean, the, yeah, great-grandfather. I wanted to see what it would be like to decompose. His own father? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First of all, bring the skull to Thanksgiving. Put it on the plate. Yes. Uh, second of all, this is a serial killer. Unless Grandpa has the greatest sense of humor, he's an undiscovered comic genius. No, he said... <laughs> I want to see what it's like for a body to decompose, but you're exactly right. Like it's your father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, your yeah. father. Exactly. What did your father and what did and what did great granddad do to granddad? Oh. Yeah, you can and, only imagine oh, behind it, the barn. It, yeah, yeah. And was that a we- daily visit, a weekly visit after you just threw the body back there? It, fucking serial killer. That's like Ted Bundy used to go and like or, visit the bodies and fuck. Or great granddad was a horrible molester and killer himself, and he said, "I'm not burying this guy. Fuck him. I'm chucking him back behind <laughs> the barn." <laughs> Let the, let the maggots eat him. All sorts of possibilities here, but, uh, but but definitely this is this should be a Thanksgiving discussion. Right when everybody's tucking into a little bit of pumpkin pie, yeah, I got something to tell you. <laughs> Guess what, Grandpa has. That's an unbelievable story. Oh my God! But once again, illustrates the problem with men. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Another good name for this podcast: <laughs> problems, problems with, with men. men. The problems with men. <laughs> Ask him why he did it. I don't know. You know what? <laughs> Grandpa, you could use wow. better help. This show is sponsored by Better Help. <laughs> A common misconception about relationships is they have to be easy to be right, but sometimes the best ones can happen when both people put in the work and make them great. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, like when Grandpa put his father... <laughs> <laughs> on your farm to watch him rot. <laughs> Whether with friends, uh, work, your significant <laughs> other, BetterHelp is there for you. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. <laughs> unlike <laughs> Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but not unlike the guy who's surfing porn. <laughs> <laughs> Destined to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Uh, just fill out the brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Like all the folks in these Dear Zuckerman letters could use better help. They could use better help. <laughs> they all could. <laughs> Instead of writing in to a newspaper, you're going to go to BetterHelp. Dot com. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bike911 to get 10% off uh, today. You're off your uh, first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bike911. The skull. 10% off your first <laughs> What's that? The skull. Body. <laughs> that was really fun. I'm really excited. I ordered those letters perfectly because I thought, I think Zuckerman will get uh, more entertained I- with each one. I'm and I do was. this one, and I, and I played with the order, and I'm very happy with job. how that I'm turned out. Happy. Thanks, Skull I'm very happy winner. with this order. Grandpa Skull came in from one of the listeners, by <laughs> the way. That's the title of the show, Grandpa Skull. Grandpa. <laughs> the whole reason we're doing Dear Zuckerman is, is whoever sent me that thank you. That, was, uh, that, that made me laugh, and, I, and, and you're right. It was good. All right, we've got 200 questions here. <laughs> Let's see if we can get to some. 225, sorry. The listeners are unbelievable. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> I'm not going to start with that. Uh, Estevez Breton. Estevez Breton, Porsche guy. The Grand Tour will continue with three new presenters. I didn't know that. Would you like to do something like that? Can you imagine? Where would we ever find three presenters to replace Clarkson and his crew? Where would we find that? No, we're here. No, we're uh, here. <laughs> Who would do that? I don't know. Couldn't, couldn't think of anything. Would they take five hosts? Ooh. A Johnny, a Matt, a Jerry, a Spike, and a Zuckerman. Um, working for Amazon. Not <laughs> after we just trashed their <laughs> I was gonna biggest say, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did we trash it? No. No. No, it was fun. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, Yuri Tereshin. How often do you guys drive in the snow snow? Well, uh, the family took uh, the Subaru Crosstrek up. 
uh, because there was going to be a storm. And I don't have my uh, blazer, not my blazer, my um, Bronco. Bronco. Yep, it's coming, I think, next week. Um, <clears throat> and I said, look, and Jack was 100% behind me, but Erica didn't. She's like, maybe I should take the Model Y. I go, you've got the greatest car for uh, Lake Tahoe, snow. And she called the, the ladies. It was just moms and kids. And they called from the car. They, and then everybody was overjoyed with the performance of the Subaru Crosstrek. Nice. Yeah, it had the all-season tires. It was a little bit of snow on the ground. But, <clears throat> you know, some of these ladies can be a little uh, snobby about their wheels. It doesn't say. And they loved it. Yeah. They yeah. loved the Subaru Crosstrek Sport in the green and camo. It overperformed. And young Jack first and drove, uh, I think, Six of the seven hours up right there. On. Nice, good for Jack. Okay, and he's he's uh, and I think he gets he's got his driver's license test uh, tomorrow, Thursday, in the morning. But I said, look, I said to Erica and Jack, I said, this is a chance for you to get bored driving. Yeah. Do do this drive from door to door, and you're gonna get driving. And and he you're did. Going to be a driver nice. after that drive. Yeah, it good. was great, and we were uh, pretty excited about it. Yeah, I went up to you the drive snow. In the snow right? Yeah, all the time. I went up to the snow on uh, Sunday up on Angeles Crest. It was all snowed in. It was fun. Rich and I played in the snow. Go up to Big Bear all the time. I've done. I was just in I, Rivian though. You took the Rivian. I took the Rivian, but I was just you know I just drove the uh, the new G wagon uh, from Norway to Sweden. That was pretty snowy. So wow, that was fun. Yeah, so we do yeah. get up there. Yeah, <clears throat> as you know, I had uh, some trouble in the Defender a couple of years back. In but that was like a, a storm of the century. Yes, right. Gina for LA. Oh my, uh, my wife's friend Gina for LA, uh -oh. part of the uh, HC for Us uh -huh. Healthcare for All initiative. Why won't my kids get driver's licenses? They live in <laughs> LA here. I'm about to rename them both Lisa. Is that a reference <laughs> to The Simpsons? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I would guess Gina, Gina, that look. I got my driver's license as quickly as I could because I wanted to drive away from my parents as quickly as I could. Same. It, it sounds like you're doing a good job raising your kids. I was going to yeah. say, I was gonna say <laughs> stop driving them everywhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's what you need to do. It sounds like they love you. They're happy there. They don't want to drive away. And it's your job now to make them want to drive away. My neighbor got a house delivered the other day. Uh, put a, house? A, yeah, an ADU. It was crazy. They had like a robot tractor that was dragging <clears> it up. And he's like, yeah, my son's 38. I can't get him out of the house, so he can't afford a house, so I bought him a house. <laughs> Put it in. Really? Yeah. I love looking at ADUs on Instagram. This was There's like something a, about a little houses. I'm mean, really, they this, get me so this excited. Is a, this is a, 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 almost 1,100 square foot. It's not a little house. It's yeah. A big ass But you thing. know what I mean? Yeah, Just yeah, taking yeah. something and drop it in your backyard and oh, you can yeah. live there? Yeah. It's yeah. it's like a fort for adults. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then they put you out back behind the ADU to decompose, <laughs> <laughs> and, if, and never open the door to the ADU to see what your relative is doing in there. Oh, in I would get put there so fast. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Oh, that's but, cool. Yeah, it's just wild. Uh, Forza Motorcars, uh, Zuckerman driving a Cybertruck, Spike driving a Corvette. Is the world coming to an end? Yes. Um, <laughs> do you had a Cybertruck in your hangar? Whose Cybertruck is My that? My partner, John Carpenter. Uh, he got a cyber. He put in a. He put a deposit down ages ago, and he got one. A beast. Oh, you got the cyber beast. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. And I said, "What are you going to do with it?" And he said, "Surprisingly, man, I was thinking to put it on Toro." I said, "Are you crazy?" Oh no. I said, "Are you crazy?" That's what happened goes, to the Beverly Hills. Well, exactly. Thing, right? Driving into the hotel. Yeah. He goes, "You think they do that?" I said, "Carpenter, when we were 19 and we got in a rental car, remember going 100 miles an hour and putting it in reverse to see what would happen?" <laughs> I said, "That's." <laughs> So, well, back up, though. Why does he want to put it on Turo? He's a well-off lawyer who's making a lot of money. Got, I, yes, because he comes up with harebrained ideas, and is he, he doesn't driving actually it? like it, and he doesn't, but he doesn't want to sell it. Because well, he can't sell it. He I can't heard. sell it. I heard they're stuck. He's stuck for a year. So, What is he paying for that thing? Yeah, I didn't ask him, but I will, and I'll find out. I, I, I mean, might it's be about interested a, it's in about that It's about 140 idea. grand, right, for the cyber beast? Yeah, yeah, but he's probably leasing it, right? I don't know what he's doing, but I think that he got it. I think he kind of liked it. I think he agreed that, I think, it, you know John a little bit, John Carpenter, my partner of all these years. He's a curious kind of guy, so it, it appealed to his sense of curiosity how weird and bizarre the vehicle is. And then, uh, But I don't think that he's got a ton of use for it. Um and I don't know who it was. I think it was Dean Maroney was telling me that they, that that Musk is enforcing that clause, that resale clause. You can't yeah. resell these things. Or you're going to get sued for fifty grand. Or There's something. a bunch that are up on auction sites already. Yeah, maybe those people don't care. <coughs> right. If they, yeah, yeah, if yeah. If they ever get to buy one again or not. 
Uh, designs, Greenwood, what's your favorite Pop-Tart flavor for snacking on the road? Well, not for on the road, but I, you know, and it's weird. I guess the advertising is working for me. I, n- I really didn't eat Pop-Tarts, but now I'm eating them like crazy. Oh, really? What do you like? I, I like the blueberry frosted. Okay. I've, I've been buying I them like every week. I like cinnamon. You like a cinnamon? Yeah. Brown sugar cinnamon? Yeah. With frosting or without? With frosting. I haven't had a pop tart in forty years. I have right. no idea. Yeah, you can't <laughs> I just, remember. I I think the the raspberry or strawberry or some strawberry, some red, of course, the red one. Yeah, I, I, dude, this is a childhood memory that I don't. Well, you Pat, remember what matzo tastes like? Sadly, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Patrick Reiskowitz. Uh, Reiskowitz. <laughs> Speaking of matzo, Reiskowitz here. Reiskowitz. Favorite thing to eat while driving. Well, what does that mean? We, you know, we first of all. I can't speak for Johnny, but Zuckerman and I don't eat while we're driving. No way. <clears throat> I mean, a K- if I have a, if I can find the exact right, like a Cliff Bar is the only thing I might attempt if yeah, I was really protein hungry. Bar or French fries, like on the way back no, from McDonald's. No, 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 no. There's, there's no, we, no I, eating in the there's car. There's no eating in cars. Yeah, no eating in the car. I, again, I, I don't. I just on I the road. A rental oh, car, oh, yes. On the road, oh beef jerky, maybe. Yeah, beef jerky. Beef if I'm jerky. In a rental car, yeah. maybe. Beef yeah. jerky, beef jerky. <clears throat> Chappie, how how perfect is a Rolex Daytona on the wrist? What kind of question is that? <laughs> I am I weren't no, I'm wearing GMT today. Where'd you get that? <laughs> Which Rolex do I have on? Oh yeah, That's a nice one. You've got a That's a, the Bruiser. A, you've got a newer GMT on. No, this is the uh, this is the Bruiser, the black and blue one. Right. What year is that? But I was pleasantly surprised to find it in my watch box. I was like, nice. oh yeah, I've got this. Because there I've been is. wearing the Sheffield SCR watch a ton, yes. a ton, mm. a ton, a ton, a ton. I love that thing. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Skull. Uh, Horton74, of course, wants to know if we're going to go see Scott Dixon race. You just heard it. You are, and you'll see the unfrosted Pop-Tart uh, American Legion Honda car. So, Yes. Uh, my blue robot. Will Johnny have another medical emergency anytime soon? And will Spike <laughs> announce it? I didn't announce it on the show. People were expecting Johnny, and all I said was he had a small medical emergency to deal with. My wife had her gallbladder out, and she's fine. And she's, she's fine. Johnny she's has fine. one stroke a day. <laughs> <laughs> He's fine too. Yeah. <laughs> so far, <laughs> though, you know, I've been working. Uh, in a small recording studio working for these guys uh, striking distance on this video game, which I love. They're all Porsche guys. It's fantastic. But I, but um, every time I'm in this small room, they got the air purifiers going, and I'm thinking, you know, we're recording lines um, and, uh, you know, with actors. We're going to be doing that for maybe like a month for this cool game, this roguelike. I know so much about the video game. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I could impress everyone with my video game. <laughs> Except knowledge. for me, but go ahead. But my point is, I'm really starting to get worried. I'm going to get COVID, because I'm in, and I said, because what what's the air thing there? And the and the uh, and Geo who works the board there, he's like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, we're just we're trying to prevent COVID, and you know, if you're trying to prevent it, it's everywhere. And then and, and then I'm hopping on a plane again uh, uh, this week. Is it still out there? I'm going to end up. I'm going to be texting you, Johnny, that I have COVID. There's worse, and you can shit tell everybody. There. There's worse shit out there than COVID, though. That's that, the problem. The nanovirus and I, poop I, thing. I, I, well, I didn't get the poop thing, but I got some kind of fucking sinus flu. It was Ugh. horrible, horrible. How do I stay? How do I stay unsick, Zuckerman, on the plane? Just what do I do? Bury yourself. Put alive. a plastic bag over your head and tie it. <laughs> cinch it tight at the base. <laughs> you Are you sure? Sick. I'll do it. Yeah. yeah, you won't be sick, but you'll be dead. Hundred percent. You will not get COVID. <laughs> the sweet release of death. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Honestly, I totally had forgotten about it until I saw that purifier. Um. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. What happened to the Bring a Trailer episode? I believe that's next week. Randy Nonnenberg. Keith refused. Um, we uh, Randy uh, did the show, and we, we just happened to record a bunch of shows. Um, so we have that show. We have James Marsden coming up. And they are all going to roll out uh, starting next week with Randy uh, Nonnenberg, Bring a Trailer. And Randy, did you see those uh, cool toys he bought? Yeah. 
he brought me all those die cast bring a trailer things and it was really cool and 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 uh we're handing them off to richard yes right they're they're apparently very collectible right now he will uh, not look at them and keep playing minecraft but yeah <laughs> <laughs> really oh he's so into minecraft so you're gonna keep them yeah, or i'll give them to the neighbor's kid who actually likes cars and but, don't but, forget to get reggie that yeah uh, yeah i Sheffield. got to watch yeah 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 Reggie's in Germany. <clears throat> Dr. Kyle Stanley, are you guys going to the air and water event in the OCA? We think we do. We think we will, of course. I'm going to be course. there. I don't know if we're going to be there, but I'll be there. Soroman, where is the Bronco? Um, it's here. It has landed, um, but I have not taken delivery of it yet because I, it was, you know, funny car thing. Why take delivery of a car like today and then leave town for a week? Exactly. While it sits and gets dirty in the driveway. I, I want, I get really excited, like you all do, about any new car. It <laughs> doesn't matter. And I really like to have a couple hours to just sit and enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited about that um, Ford um, Bronco, limited edition, uh, in the Robin's Egg Blue with the tan interior. And uh, the folks at Ford hooked it up for me. And thank you for that. And uh, you'll know, uh, you'll see it when I see it. I'm going to blab all about it. I'm excited about it. Um, oh, yeah, the K1. Zach Bell wants to know, what's the scoop? Eight-seat EV Porsche SUV. Well, if you listen, Zach Bell, you would have known. Remember that show we laid out their entire Porsche's entire yeah. release schedule <laughs> right through yeah. 2029? It turns out everything, whoever sent that to us, was exactly right. And now the K1 has been spotted. Yeah. What yep. do you know about it, John? It's, it's uh, you know, the next gen Cayenne will be electric. And so it's just a stretched Cayenne, essentially. Um, I'm not sure the cadence, if it comes out before or after the Cayenne, but... <clears throat> Did you see the pictures on the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's going to be a three-row electric SUV um, that'll you know be real fast and do all the good Porsche stuff. And if it's anything like the Macan EV, which I drove a prototype of, it'll be absolutely fantastic. It'll just be wonderful. So I think so. I think Porsche is going to be very successful with these cars. Mm -hmm. The Macan. I think there's a lot of excitement. A lot of folks are asking me about that car. Yeah, it's it's great. It, it's it's it just it feels like a. Porsche SUV, not a Porsche, but a feels like a Cayenne Macan, but it's electric and it makes a boatload of horsepower. It's like, you know, I figure what it is, like over 600 horsepower um, in the turbo version. And yeah, it's great. Wow. Yeah. This is going to be good. Um, <clears throat> Marina Massoni, can you please separately say the phrase filthy monger? <laughs> T-Y-S-M. Filth monger. Filth monger. Oh yeah, what? <laughs> Filth monger. Filth monger. Filth monger. <laughs> Filth monger. Filth monger. Fingerboard workshop. I I hate the Johnny hate. Let him know, Spike. Thanks for a good show. Oh Johnny. Oh, oh poor Johnny. Johnny. Why? <laughs> I'm just sitting here. Oh. Oh, we feel so bad. You know, that guy who used to trash you all the time, Monmouth, New Jersey, is now your biggest fan. I, well, you banned him, and then the, he had to come crawling back. I didn't I didn't mean for him to become a fan. I just said, don't be mean to Johnny I like mean, that. It's over fine. Over it's fine, but that's fine. Fingerboard Workshop, by the way, is a guy who makes those little finger uh, finger skateboards. Oh, okay. You know what those are? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds lucrative. That was that was fourth grade. <laughs> was finger, was all we love those. Really? They're that old? I had them in fourth grade, yeah. That's all come we on. Did. That's all we did. Wow. Yeah. Please, please, please talk about the new Toyota Land Cruiser. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Has anybody driven it? We, none of us have no, driven it. I'd like to. No, the launch is actually, to, um, uh, it'll, it'll, it, the launch is going on when the show airs. So it's down in uh, San Diego. But no one's driven <clears> it. <throat> what is the biggest delta between the hype and actual driving experience of a car you guys have had? Will B. Jing. Ooh. The hype versus the driving experience. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I mean, I would say, I would say the Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, that's what I'm getting. I know uh, that uh, could be true. That's yeah. funny. Our RS six is sort of there too. It's mm -hmm. like it on paper, it's great. In reality, it's like the the E sixty three and the Panamera wagon are just they're so much better as performance cars. Yeah. Um, Her stuff. Uh, Quadruple 09, when do we get more mo motorcycle reviews? You're exactly right. I have not been driving motorcycles. Season's coming. I've got a lot of stuff in the garage right now. A um, lot of it. And uh, I don't know that I have room to take on more. But <laughs> Ducatis and BMWs, uh, you're welcome in my house. Um, 
And uh, anytime you want to bring the weird stuff, the crazy stuff, anybody else, go ahead. I'll give it a shot. It's fine. Uh, the Insta, formerly known as Chris, worst mechanical fail- failure you guys have ever had in a car. That's a good one. Mm. Have you ever just blown it and <laughs> blown yeah. your car apart? Which e- car? E46 BMW engine, M3. They, those That first year had a problem with a rod. Oh, yeah, the uh, the, yeah, yeah, the rods of Damocles, whatever yeah, they call it. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. you were supposed to change the oil after the 700 miles for the first time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, since I never read or pay any attention, I know everything in ten- sure. contemporary yeah. investigation. I was at about mile 3,000 with the original oil in it, and I, I heard a little thump in the engine. So I said, let me gun it and see what happens. And then <laughs> it flew apart. Yeah. It flew apart. Uh, and that was a big job. Fortunately, uh, this my service advisor at BMW, um, somehow uh, it, it appeared that I had changed the oil in the vehicle. I had the service. Oh, nice. And That's so weird. everything wow. went through. The $20,000 job went through, and everything was fine. I'm trying to think. We did. We had a, it was a, the 997 GT2 RS, and uh, we, the Motor Trend, we blew the engine on that. And Porsche North America said, this is the biggest warranty claim in Porsche North America wow. history. Yeah, it was like a $200,000 bill for that motor. Oh, I know Something what crazy. Is. I know what mine is. I was driving a Tangerine 73 Ooh. RS back to the hangar, Zuckerman, and the engine went ba-boom. Your car. His car. Yeah, can you see that, that crazy magnesium? A, a spark plug broke up, blew up, and blew into the engine somehow. Really? Like a bullet? Back. It blew down somehow. Yeah, and that was the. I had to rebuild the engine after that. The catastrophic failure of the engine and shocking. That's pretty good. Yeah, that was a good one. Good. Uh, AST 1994. Any good driving roads in southeastern part of Massachusetts? I'm new to the area, Swansea. Trying to find some interesting places to go in my car. I keep hearing Freetown is creepy. (laughs) Go to P Town. (laughs) (laughs) Provincetown's beautiful. Lovely place. Um, I don't know. I don't remember great driving roads in Massachusetts. I just loved driving when I was there because I was new to it. So I just loved being on the highway and blasting around. Yeah, you could drop down to Connecticut. There's some good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Upstate New York. But I don't know Massachusetts at all. That dude Pasha wants to know if you clowns had to move back to your respective homelands. West Bridgewater, Long Island, Thousand Oaks. Who's from Thousand Oaks? (laughs) Me. Oh. (laughs) What one car would you take with you? That's a good question. A a tank and kill everyone. (laughs) I might. Hmm. Well, you know, you go back. Every time I go back to West Bridgewater, it's so different than when I grew up that it'd be hard to kind of recreate the magic. But I know (laughs) I would, as far as a collector car, I would get an old American muscle car. I would would go back to the Chevy Nova. I would go back to the Chevelles. I'd go back to the Trans Am, maybe. I'd want my parents' 73 olds Vista Cruises station wagon with rusted out quarter panels and fenders um, and uh, a hole in the floor. But, of course, there's no going back to that. There's not. It doesn't exist. But I think I would. I mean, and again, like I... You know, I felt that in this Corvette when I drove. Like, I absolutely love this car, but it doesn't fit into my life here in, in West L.A. But let's say I lived in Ohio. Let's say I lived in Florida. I'm, I am I might get that car. You know, I, I might be affected why, by what the car community is driving there and what they value there. I'm just never going back to Thousand Oaks, so it's... it's- did you go to art school? Well, why not just Why not just go to Thousand Oaks? I've been, I try to avoid it. I, I, I mean, you were there all bad? the time. It was bad growing up. I I was I was not a happy like like Spike like you know getting my driver's license was the most important thing because Same then here. I could go to Hollywood and you know hang out next next to a dumpster where Slash was barfing behind. That was that was <laughs> much more fun. Harrison Meckling wants to know my thoughts on the Lamborghini Babalat collaboration. What is that? <laughs> I have no is idea. there one? What is? I don't know. Holy Moses! I I posted. Did you guys see the picture of the Your new ba- shoes? They sent me new tennis <laughs> shoes, right? And they had Michelin rubber soles. Amazing. Well, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's the Lamborghini part. No, that would be that would be Pirelli. I have no idea. I was really excited about that. I was like, wow, the worlds are are blending. The worlds are hitting each are other. Are you really gonna wear those? Oh yeah. Wow. He will. They're Look, like they're terrible looking. <laughs> 
<laughs> the the every uh, color in the tennis world is terrible, and when you start playing tennis, you start leaning heavily into the bad colors. Oh, it's like golf. So when I saw those, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Two years ago, I'd be like, "What is this? This is disgusting." <laughs> They're purple and red and yellow. And then when I saw them this time, I was there with the guys at Santa Monica Tennis Center picking them up today. They go, "Hey, Babalat sent your shoes in," and and there are three of us looking at them, going, "Boy, these are really cool. <laughs> these are really great." <laughs> and they're all that matters. Here's, wow. By the way, here's all that matters. Are they comfortable? The next morning after I play, are my feet going to ache or are they going to be okay? That's all that matters. Right, right. You don't you don't really care Old about how you look. Concerns. Yeah. No, it's tennis concerns, Zuckerman. It, it takes tennis a toll on your body. Of an old man. I told you what I did this morning, right? Yes. I, I injured myself last night, and I was supposed to go to the doctor. <laughs> so I was walking out the door at 8.30 this morning to go to the doctor to get an x-ray on my calf, my gastrominous muscle or something. Oh, God. Erica noticed that I was dressed for tennis. She goes, you don't look like you're going to the doctor. And I just <laughs> ran to the car. I said, I'm not. She goes, you're making a mistake. Oh, man. Ah, oh, that made me happy, though. And guess what? I, I feel all right. That's good. How was Santa Cruz bike treating you guys? Uh, pottery, uh, pottery mouth. Uh, the Santa Cruz bikes, uh, the hecklers, uh, are amazing. They're getting a ton of use. We only have them as a loan um, from our friend and fellow and listener, Seb. Um, but they are being brought up to uh, Kenter. Canyon, the Whoop Trail, uh, by myself, by both my kids, and uh, getting rave reviews for their lightness, uh, their battery assist, and how uh, much fun they are to put into the air and land, and how they work. They really are the Porsche of mountain bikes. That's awesome. They really are sweet. And I miss that Shell Monet bike, too. That, uh, that, uh, that hardtail, they call it. That was super fun and super light and great. We could do a whole mountain bike podcast. I mean, Zuckerman looks thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here snoring. The dog is snoring. Oh. We can have All Rufus right. well, eat a find one to go out on. Uh, Matt, no, not this one, but Matt Seeger wants to know. Uh, SCR Pop-Tart collab? No, but IndyCar, Honda, American Legion, Long Beach Grand Prix collab. How about that? That's pretty good. Uh, the folks at Bentley offered to drive me to the movie premiere, but uh, I guess Netflix still <laughs> wants to drive me. But I was psyched. They're like, we have a chauffeured car for you. Bentley is so great. They're oh, so yeah. nice. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Why can't you do that? What's that? You can't do that? You can't take the Bentley? I know. I, I'm kind of, it's not up to me, my transportation got for that it, one it, event. Got it, got it, got it. But I wouldn't, I told them, I, if I can, I will. We'll do could, it. And I said, Bentley take Zuckerman and I? Yes. Okay. All right. Now are you guys are coming to the premiere? Yeah, we'd love to. Well, are we invited? Yeah, I can invite you. Right. I haven't even been invited yet. When you, sure. Okay, can can we please come? Can I please? If come? I can get you guys in, absolutely. Okay, yeah, in Why a Bentley. We? We'll take the Bentley. Yeah, you guys can come. It'd be great. <laughs> we'll dress up. <laughs> I gotta get some more tickets for the uh, premiere. <laughs> it's uh, April thirtieth, by the way. Oh, nice. Okay. And we're up against a movie called The Fall Guy with Ryan uh, Gosling. Yeah, well, you're gonna beat him. Uh, there's no it. beating. He's in theaters, and it's supposedly a great movie. And if you want to stay home that night, you're going to be watching uh, Unfrosted Netflix. On a Is Friday it night. the Fall Guy, like the TV show Fall Guy? You would think, but I think it's a romantic comedy. Oh, and look. he's uh, Ryan, I watched the trailer, and, he, and Ryan Gosling's hilarious, and right. it, he's really funny. And, you know, obviously he's got a lot going on after Barbie, so um, yeah. the guy can do no wrong right now. But I think the premieres are next to each other. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> you want me to throw Pop-Tarts at Ryan? <laughs> no. Have have a pop yeah. Look, there throw are enough rumble. eyeballs in the world. It's hard to compete with Netflix because they're just everywhere. Right. More people are going to see this. Someone told me, and I don't remember who it was, but someone told me that uh, Scorsese's movie there, The Irishman, the, the, the views... More people saw that than all of Scorsese's movies yeah. in total. Sure. Just from that one Netflix blast. Wow. I mean, it, it, it's because it gets crazy. Like, we released the trailer last week, and then immediately it's like, Hungary reached out to us. We, we would need to translate the trailer to the, into Hungarian. Uh, Let's call the Hungarian. He'll <laughs> handle <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, it just goes everywhere right, all at right, once. Right, 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 so right. Um, I don't know that anybody outside of the United States knows what a Pop-Tart is, but I guess we'll, we'll find out. Canadians? Anyways, go ahead. All right, let me find one last question. All right, this is a good, simple question. Hmm. Okay, there's two last questions. 
First Fabrice, uh, Ottawa. My 17-year-old daughter is learning stick. Is it a waste of time? Our manual's a dying breed. No, get no her way. to learn. Yes. It is such a... There's always going to be a moment in every kid's life where somebody's going to say, do you know how to drive a stick? Not to keep going, pinging back to this movie, but we were shooting a scene uh, that was a driving shot outside of a Holiday Inn. And when you watch the movie, you're going to see this. And they were there. The picture cars were going by, and we would call action, and we and three cars would go by, and I wasn't happy with the car choices. <laughs> this is, forget about the acting. I was just going. I was like, hey, hey, director, hey, Jerry, did you notice the first car coming through? So I, I got uh, one of the production coordinators. So what else do we have? They go, we have a white Jaguar, but it's a manual, and nobody knows how to drive it here, and we're running out of. Uh, oh man, we're, we're running out of time. We've got uh, ten minutes left in the shoot day. And I go, does anybody here know how to drive a manual? And one of the background extras, this old guy goes, I can drive a manual. He goes, do you want to drive that car? He goes, yeah. I go, hurry up and get, get to the start point over there and, and wait for the call of action. And the crew's like, this isn't going to work. I go, I trust this guy. I trust this guy. Action. And it had to be timed perfectly. And we only had one take left. And the guy drove right through the shot, and that's the shot we end, we we got nice. the shot. Nice. No one will care except for everyone listening here and you guys. And that guy said, you know, I was just he was a background guy who was just walking into the hotel. Yeah. This old guy, yeah. and and he made us so happy. It was a Friday, and we were like, there you go. That's why it's important. I'm going to end the show right there. That's a fantastic, Done. yeah, fantastic reason. Yay to that old guy. Yay to that guy. Yay to learning how to but drive manual. You know, like the, the daughter's going to be in a situation in college where her friend's drunk and like you know you yeah. got to be able to drive the car and or you go to Europe. Yeah, or just yeah, you want to buy a car. Yeah, yes, good, good skill. Well, there you go. That's our show. That's the show. Like I said, next week we've got Randy Nonnenberg from Bring a Trailer. Who uh, who? It's a great show. Randy brought the heat. He brought the stories. We talked about everything. Did he bring his grandfather's skull? <laughs> he did. <laughs> yes. It's on Bring a Trailer right now. And people are answering questions about it. That's not the real skull. <laughs> we will see you next week on Spike's Car Radio. Thanks for listening to Spike's Car Radio. Listen to new episodes every Wednesday and be sure to subscribe. Stay to the right, losers.